Russia's worst nightmare just became reality. For the first time ever, SpaceX's Dragon has stolen control of the ISS's most critical function, orbital boosting, ending Moscow's 20-year monopoly over keeping the station alive. This September third breakthrough doesn't just free NASA from Russian dependency, it signals the complete end of Russia's leverage over American space operations, but there's something even bigger happening that no one's talking about. Why is SpaceX really mastering this technology when the ISS dies in 2030? The answer reveals their master plan to dominate the entire future of space stations, starting with Vast Haven. Today we're exposing how this single reboost test just broke Russia's space control forever. September 3rd, 2024. For exactly 5 minutes and 12 seconds, Russia watched their 20-year monopoly over ISS orbital control crumble in real time. SpaceX's Dragon wasn't just performing another test, it was executing the most significant power shift in space operations since the Cold War. Here's what actually happened during those critical minutes. Dragon fired its newly upgraded Draco thrusters in a precisely calculated burn, lifting the entire 420-ton International Space Station by 1.6 kilometers. But here's what the headlines missed. This wasn't just about altitude. This was about breaking Russia's stranglehold over the most critical function keeping the ISS alive. Think of the ISS as a massive cruise ship constantly sliding down an invisible hill. Earth's atmosphere, even 400 kilometers up, creates enough drag to pull the station down 50 to 200 meters every single day. During solar maximum periods like we're experiencing now in Solar Cycle 25, that drag intensifies dramatically. Without regular orbital boosts, the ISS would lose 20 to 50 kilometers of altitude annually, eventually spiraling into catastrophic re-entry. For over two decades, only Russia's progress spacecraft could perform this life-or-death task. Moscow held the ultimate trump card, walk away from the ISS, and NASA loses the ability to keep their $150 billion investment from becoming space debris. Russia's progress could manage one or two burns per mission each raising orbit by one to five kilometers. Adequate, but barely. And here's what few people realize about Russia's leverage. Every ISS reboost gave Moscow veto power over station operations. Disagree with American policies? Delay the next progress mission. Want concessions on Ukraine sanctions? Suddenly, reboost schedules become technical challenges. But Dragon's September test shattered this dynamic forever. SpaceX fitted their cargo capsule with a revolutionary boost kit, specialized Draco engines, dedicated fuel tanks, advanced heating systems, and precision insulation, all integrated into the spacecraft's trunk section. The engineering achievement here is staggering. Dragon now delivers 1.5 times more thrust than Russia's progress. We're talking about 400 newtons of thrust per engine, with 18 Draco engines generating combined power that can nudge a structure the size of a football field through the vacuum of space. NASA immediately scheduled multiple Dragon reboosts throughout fall 2024, signaling complete confidence in the new system. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how this single breakthrough unlocks America's path to total space independence, starting with a project that will make Russia's worst fears come true. This Dragon reboost represents the final chess move in a game Russia didn't even realize they were losing. When Moscow threatened to abandon the ISS by 2028 to join China's Tiangong station, they thought they held all the cards. They were catastrophically wrong. SpaceX's solution eliminates Russian leverage permanently, but the implications reach far beyond ISS operations. This technology directly feeds into America's most ambitious space project yet. The U.S. deorbit vehicle, essentially a dragon on steroids designed to safely destroy the ISS when it retires in 2030. Here's where the engineering becomes mind-blowing. The U.S. DV will mount 46 Draco engines compared to Dragon's current 18, generating a combined 18.8 .8 tons of thrust. That's four times more powerful than today's Dragons, capable of gradually pulling the ISS down from 400 kilometers altitude to a perigee of 80 to 100 kilometers over the remote South Pacific near Point Nemo. And here's a detail most people overlook. The USDV will carry 16,000 kilograms of propellant, six times more than Cargo Dragon, 
requiring Falcon Heavy instead of Falcon 9 for launch. This isn't just about deorbiting the ISS, it's about proving America can handle the largest, most complex space operations independently. The competitive landscape analysis reveals Russia's strategic nightmare. While Moscow doubles down on aging Soyuz technology and China builds their isolated Tiangong station, SpaceX is positioning Dragon as the universal solution for next-generation space infrastructure. Boeing's Starliner remains plagued by technical failures. European and Japanese cargo vehicles lack reboost capability entirely. But there's something even bigger happening that no one's talking about. As commercial space stations like Vast Haven 1 prepare for May 2026 launch, Dragon becomes the only Western vehicle capable of both crew transport or in orbital maintenance. Vast has already signed exclusive deals with SpaceX. No Russian partners, no Chinese cooperation, no other providers. The economic implications are staggering. Every international partner now sees a clear path to space station operations without Russian dependency. That shifts billions in future contracts toward American companies and eliminates Moscow's geopolitical leverage in space negotiations. Russia's space program, once the envy of the world, now faces irrelevance in the commercial space age. Their Progress spacecraft, their Soyuz capsules, their entire orbital logistics capability, suddenly obsolete in a market dominated by reusable American vehicles that cost a fraction to operate. And here's why this changes everything. Dragon's reboost mastery isn't just about current operations. It's the foundation technology that will define the next 30 years of human space presence. Dragon's successful ISS reboost solves the fundamental challenge that will define the next era of space exploration. How do you maintain permanent human presence in orbit without depending on any single nation's cooperation? The answer lies in what SpaceX learned from that September test. Vast Haven 1 station launches in just 18 months, featuring 45 cubic meters of habitable volume, private crew quarters, and that breathtaking 1.1 meter dome window for Earth observation. But like every orbital structure, Haven will experience continuous altitude decay, requiring regular reboosts. The station needs a permanently docked vehicle capable of this critical function. And right now, only Dragon has proven this capability. Here's where SpaceX faces their next engineering challenge, and it's fascinating. Current Dragons can only remain docked for 180 to 210 days maximum before returning to Earth. That works fine for ISS crew rotations, but fails completely for permanent commercial station operations. SpaceX has two potential solutions, and the choice will determine America's dominance in space logistics. Option 1. Rotate Dragons every six months using their existing fleet of five operational vehicles. Simple, reliable, achievable with current technology. Option two represents a quantum leap in space vehicle capability. SpaceX could develop an upgraded Dragon variant capable of two to five year orbital duration, borrowing advanced technology from their upcoming USDV design. We're talking about expanded fuel tanks holding three times current capacity, Advanced life support systems recycling 95% of water and air, upgraded solar arrays generating 20 to 30 kilowatts of power, and autonomous maintenance systems capable of diagnosing and fixing problems years after launch. Most intriguingly, VAST has confirmed Haven 2 will connect directly to Starlink, enabling high-speed internet and real-time Earth communications. This suggests a future where commercial stations operate more like orbital cities than research outposts, requiring permanent logistic support that only proven reboost-capable vehicles can provide. But there's one critical question that will determine whether America truly dominates the post-ISS era. Can SpaceX scale Dragon production fast enough to support multiple commercial stations simultaneously while maintaining ISS operations through 2030? The timeline is aggressive. Haven 1 launches May 2026. Haven 2's modular construction begins shortly after, with sections launched individually and connected in orbit. Multiple international commercial stations are planned by 2028 to 2030. Each requires permanent reboost capability. If SpaceX succeeds, Russia becomes completely irrelevant to human space operations for the first time since Sputnik. Moscow's threats to abandon international cooperation become meaningless 
when America no longer needs Russian spacecraft to maintain orbital infrastructure. The strategic implications are profound. China's isolated Tiangong station suddenly looks primitive compared to Starlink-connected commercial facilities. Russia's space program, stripped of its last remaining leverage, faces budget cuts and international irrelevance. What's certain is this. September 3rd's five-minute burn didn't just lift the ISS 1.6 kilometers higher. It elevated America to permanent dominance in human space operations, leaving Russia's space ambitions grounded forever. The nightmare Moscow always feared has finally arrived, delivered by a reusable dragon that makes their best spacecraft look like relics from another era. The space race is over, America won, and Russia just realized they weren't even competing in the right game. This is exactly why September 3rd represents the most pivotal moment in space operations since Apollo. What started as an orbital boost became America's declaration of complete space independence. Russia's 20-year ISS stranglehold evaporated in five minutes of dragon thrust. We're witnessing truly sustainable space infrastructure. When Haven 1 launches next year with permanent reboost capability, humanity crosses a threshold. Self-sufficient orbital cities independent of Earth-based politics. Dragon's Mastery unlocks multiple commercial stations, Mars mission vehicles, and the logistics network for permanent human settlement beyond Earth. Do you think SpaceX will choose six-month Dragon rotations or develop the multi-year upgrade variant? Each path leads to dramatically different possibilities. This is Space Hub, analyzing breakthroughs shaping humanity's future among the stars. For more deep dive analysis, you know what to do. September 3rd wasn't just when Dragon boosted the ISS, it was when America's space dominance became unstoppable. NASA's acting administrator just dropped a bombshell. Each Artemis mission costs $4.2 billion, making a sustainable moon program impossible. While America struggles with this crushing reality, China races ahead. But here's what most people don't realize. Elon Musk revealed the genius fix for this exact problem back in 2017. A radically different approach that could revolutionize how we reach the moon. When NASA's acting administrator Shaw Duffy dropped those brutal numbers, $4 billion a launch, he wasn't just complaining about costs, he was admitting that America's moon program is built on a foundation that makes long-term success mathematically impossible. But here's what most people don't realize about this crisis. It stems from a single catastrophic design decision made over a decade ago. The space launch system is essentially a $4.2 billion fireworks show. Every component, the massive orange core stage, twin solid rocket boosters, upper stage, gets destroyed after one use. Imagine if airlines had to build a new Boeing 777 for every flight, then crash it into the ocean upon landing. That's NASA's current approach to reaching the moon. The numbers tell the story. NASA's exploration upper stage has exploded from $962 million to $2.8 billion while running six years behind schedule. Congress is now demanding alternatives, but every option reveals how trapped NASA really is. Blue Origin's New Glenn upper stage would make the rocket too tall for the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center, requiring millions in modifications to a structure that's been launching rockets since the Apollo era. And here's where things get interesting. The technical problems keep multiplying. Artemis One's heat shield suffered unexpected erosion during lunar re-entry, with over 100 spots losing material as Orion slammed into Earth's atmosphere at 40,000 kilometers per hour. Each fix adds months to the timeline, while China advances methodically toward their own lunar landing. The Centaur 5 alternative would require rebuilding launch towers and redesigning core stage interfaces. Every solution creates new million-dollar problems, like trying to fix a house by rebuilding the foundation while people are still living inside. But this engineering nightmare has an elegant solution that was hiding in plain sight. And here's what few people realize. Elon Musk revealed this exact fix years before NASA even admitted they had a problem. At the 2017 International Astronautical Congress, Elon Musk presented what seemed like an impossible vision 
sending 100 people to the moon using a single, fully reusable spacecraft. While NASA was committing billions to their throwaway rocket approach, Musk was designing something that would make their entire strategy obsolete. Think of NASA's current plan like a cross-country move where you hire three different companies, one truck to get your stuff to a warehouse, a plane to fly it across the country, then another truck at your destination. SpaceX's approach? One vehicle that drives door to door, then drives itself back for the next customer. The technical elegance is breathtaking. NASA's Artemis missions require an entire fleet working in perfect coordination. SLS rocket, Orion capsule, multiple Starship tankers for refueling, and a specialized human landing system. One failure anywhere in this chain strands astronauts in the most hostile environment imaginable. SpaceX's original Starship concept eliminates this complexity entirely. One vehicle refuels in Earth orbit, flies directly to the moon, lands on the surface, and returns astronauts safely using its own heat shield and aerodynamic control surfaces for a vertical landing back on Earth. No complex orbital rendezvous. No single points of failure stringing together multiple spacecraft. But here's the detail most people overlook. This wasn't just about technical superiority. It was about recognizing that sustainable lunar exploration requires economic sustainability. At $4.2 billion per mission, NASA can afford maybe one flight per year. SpaceX's reusable approach could potentially cut costs by 95%, enabling dozens of lunar missions annually. And here's what's truly noteworthy about the competitive landscape. While NASA debates upper-stage alternatives and fixes heat shield problems, China advances with methodical precision. They're not burdened by congressional budget battles or public failure analysis. Every month NASA spends on redesigns is another month closer to watching Chinese astronauts claim the lunar high ground. The economic implications extend far beyond national pride. The first nation to establish permanent lunar presence will control access to resources potentially worth trillions, rare earth elements, helium-3 for future fusion reactors, and the strategic advantage of operating from the ultimate high ground. We'll come back to this point later, but there's a remarkable twist in how NASA has actually adopted part of SpaceX's vision while missing its most revolutionary aspect. And this is where things get interesting. The barriers that once made this impossible